Welcome to Hope Today. God is faithful and he's got something special for you today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Anna Schmidt. I don't know, Anna, is something special well, happening today? I don't, I feel like you've got oh, the- Oh, wait fastest. a second. Wait, oh, I'm a little bit ahead of time, you know, for the eclipse. Uh, I'm uh -huh. sure many of you are uh, going to be uh, wearing these later today and watching the eclipse, although it's going to be cloudy here, but it's, going to be cloudy. it's been this, crazy about the eclipse. And this is the fashion statement of the day. I'm telling you. Everybody it's... who's cool has a pair of these glasses, but I don't. So I guess <laughs> I'm not. No, I think you're, you're the coolest if you don't have a pair. <laughs> Tell us oh. what's coming up. Yes, well, it's good to be with you on this Monday. Thank you for joining us here on Hope Today. We get to talk all about dreams. Do they include messages from God? And what about our nightmares and the struggles with insomnia? Well, our guest today, Jennifer Evaz, joins us in a few minutes to share from her new book, Awaken the Dreamscape. She'll talk about building blocks for understanding the supernatural power of your dreams. And Tom, dreams are crazy sometimes. They're crazy. And I'm one of those that remember my dreams a lot. And I've usually not gotten anything except craziness out of my dreams. But occasionally God does say something. So right. I'm excited to talk to Jennifer about that and, and, and to see, you know, what what God uh, is wanting to speak to us. It's just another yes. way he can speak to us. Right, and I'll say like, this is an area that I'm not well versed in. So I'm very excited to talk with Jennifer and cause I'm always open to learn, to uh, receive more from God, to experience God more, to know what he's speaking to us. And so if you're sort of in that same boat as I am, where you just really don't know a lot about the dream interpretation what our dreams mean. This is going to be a great conversation for all of us to soak in some new information that could truly be life changing. Absolutely. So we've got really some important things happening today. We're going to hear about our dreams from Jennifer. We're also going to hear about an amazing move of God that is happening uh, uh, where there were 200 people baptized. It's, it's just, it's, it's going to be wonderful. You're going to hear about that in our Meaningful Monday segment. Also, there's always uh, uh, our prayer line available. You can uh, you know, call that at any time and get prayer and we'll be ministering to you later and uh, give you an opportunity to do that. Also, I want to let you know that we'll be doing a special edition of Stump the Viewer. Now, you know about Stump the Host, right? Where that we get embarrassed on TV when we don't know our Bibles very well. Well, we have a, a special edition called Stump the Viewer, something we've been doing lately. And this Thursday's Hope Today, we're gonna celebrate our 45th anniversary of being on the air, and we'll be giving away a special prize to one randomly selected viewer who enters the Stump the Viewer contest. Once again, that's during this Thursday's Hope Today, so you'll wanna make sure to tune in and see how you can enter and win. Yay. Yay. So much fun. <laughs> I know. So much fun. All right, well, let's talk about dreams. Jennifer Evaz is a minister, speaker, and author whose heart is to equip believers in the supernatural and raise up effective prayer warriors. Today, she joins us to answer some of the most common questions about our dreams, along with questions about nightmares and insomnia. Her new book is Awaken the Dreamscape. So Jennifer, welcome to Hope Today. Hi, thank you so much for having me back. I love your show. I'm so glad that you keep bringing me on and I'm excited for what's gonna happen today. For sure, it's so good to have mm -hmm. you back with us. So tell us what what is Dreamscape and what motivated you to lean into understanding dream interpretation? Well, there's a few motivations. One was just a, a personal breakthrough in the areas of dreams. Uh, it was more like the byproduct of being delivered actually from a, uh, a spiritual oppression that was causing some insomnia, uh, was causing some really difficult uh, situations while I was sleeping. And we actually dialed it down into it was a, it was a spiritual problem. Um, and the Lord in his just, just divine providence, he dropped a key in a friend of mine. She actually got a word of knowledge. And as a result of that word of knowledge, I was set free from mind binding insomnia. And, um, and once that broke, uh, I started to dream, not just dream, but dream prophetically. I started knowing the future in my dreams, unlike I ever had before. 
And then it just kind of grew. I went into um, Australia and I started to notice that they have um, an interesting dream culture over there, um, just kind of in the foundation of things. And that really piqued my interest that, that there would be cultures that have a propensity for uh, a powerful dream life. And so that really is what was the catalyst to write the book. And so now we have Awaken the Dreamscape like landscape it's dreamscape and i just want to awaken people to their dreams at night by the power of the holy spirit yeah okay so i feel like when i have these dreams a lot of times i wake up in the morning and i don't remember what i dreamed about so how what do we do about that like if we have dreams and we want to hear god speak to us through them remember them how do we begin understanding the messages and holding on to them from our dreams? Okay, there's a couple things. Is number one, a lot of people don't think to ask, Lord, help me to remember my dreams. Um, so if you're not doing that, and you, you probably are, but if you're not, I would invite you to ask the Lord for that because he said very clearly in Acts chapter two, one of the blessings of being a spirit-filled believer is that you're going to dream at night. And so he, that, you know, with, obviously there's an inference there that you would actually remember your dreams. That's, that's what I believe. Uh, the second thing is it comes down to stewardship is you want to write those dreams down. Are you in the habit of writing down your dreams and your dreams may seem crazy. Your dreams may seem like total nonsense write them down bring them to god and say if there's anything in this let me know because i would like to know simple stewardship shouts to the lord says i'm interested in your communication at night but then there is a process of dream interpretation in my book i give a very very simple process to interpret your dreams at night real simple and uh, anybody can follow it and you will get the gist of what you are dreaming about and why you know, Jennifer, there certainly are biblical examples of God speaking through dreams, um, but are all dreams supernatural? I mean, how, how are we supposed to interpret when we get a dream? Are we, are we, is it natural? Is it just something through the day? Or is God saying something? How do we sort that out? Well, this is where the gift of discerning of spirits comes into operation and actually uh, operates also in you know conjunction with our dreams at night. Is it God? Is it the devil? Is it our flesh? Um, so just like life, okay, we hear and encounter things that come from God. They come just from life, ordinary, you know, human interaction, and some things are clearly demonic. And so our dreams are going to reflect that as well. Uh, what I would like to propose is that a lot more dreams are coming from God than we think. And the reason we reject that idea, that notion, is because uh, we, we don't under, understand the symbols. We don't understand how to interpret our dreams. And so we have a tendency to uh, dismiss it not do anything with it. And we are missing vital information at night that God is truly giving to us. And so Jennifer, are there, um, what is to be said about the nightmares that we have? Well, nightmares often, they, you know, make us fearful. They make us afraid. Sometimes we wake up uh, in an emotional state and it's not a good state. It's definitely not a state of faith. And so those are dreams that are demonically sourced. Uh, the Bible says God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So anything that produces fear, uh, nightmares will produce fear. That is coming from a demonic source. Um, however, the reason for that nightmare, the open door, uh, you know, the, the channel for why that is happening can vary from individual uh, to individual, but nevertheless, it is demonically sourced and we do need to deal with it. So in the, in the Bible, we see Daniel, we see Joseph interpreting dreams that were prophetic. What, how does prophecy intersect with dreams? And I, that's an interesting form of evangelism, I would think, right? As somebody having a dream and, and we being able to interpret what it is. You know, um, as far as those individuals, they seem to have kind of a natural propensity and understanding for what dreams mean. And, and what was fascinating about it is, you know, God positioned them uh, very strategically to bring dreams 
to, you know, rulers and kings and actually demonstrate that, you know, God is on the throne, which is fascinating. And I know individuals like that. They never study. They never had to go through a process of learning dream interpretation. Most people will have to learn it. You can learn it. It's really a process of understanding God's language and his his symbolic language from the Bible as your uh, primary source of, you know, understanding what symbols mean. And and so then when it comes to salvation and dreams, that is absolutely fascinating. We have a pastor on our staff. She was saved because of a dream she had at night. The Lord uh, showed up in her dream and showed her hell and showed her preaching the gospel and said, what would you like to do? And in the dream, she chose preaching the gospel and she woke up saved and she's on our staff today. And so oh. that's so powerful. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Um, and we are hearing more and more about people having dreams and it's leading to salvation. My husband's Middle Eastern. And so it's very common for people in the Middle East to have dreams of the man in white, that's Jesus, and they end up saved. They become a Christian as a result. Wow, I tell you what, it's so cool to see how God works in all different ways. And so Jennifer, as you travel all around the world and you're teaching about dreams and you're praying over people that, uh, that they would dream and that they would be able to remember them and understand them, what are some of the most common questions that you are asked as you travel around? Well, a lot of what you're asking is, I can't remember my dreams. I don't think I'm dreaming at night. What do I do about that? Or I, um, I don't sleep well at night. And you know, we always have a medical explanation. I'm, I'm not saying that doctors are necessarily wrong about it every single time, but when we discount the spiritual side of those things then we don't always give the right remedy. Some people need to be set free from spiritual attack at night. There is definitely a demonic, um, a demonic attack against their dreams. That's exactly what happened to me. I went through a horrible period of insomnia and it turned out it was a demonic attack against my dream life of all things. And I remember after I was set free of that, clearly, I mean, it was like night and day difference. I mean, within just uh, just days of it, I started dreaming prolifically. And, and I began to minister out of that experience. And I noticed how many people in the body of Christ were dealing with problems at night. They're having nightmares night terrors they couldn't they couldn't sleep they couldn't remember their dreams it was like it was like there's nothing happening that was of god during their night seasons and it was rather tormenting and so i began to minister out of my own testimony watching the change watching the shift happen with people and getting you know scores of testimonies all over the the world where you know i preach in different nations it was so powerful to hear that and that was before the book now people are reading the book and all of a sudden they're having dreams when they weren't having dreams. And that's simply because, you know, they're, they're setting them, their, their heart, uh, you know, to allow the Holy Spirit to awaken their dreams at night because God wants to speak to you during that, that season of time, that window of time. And he has very profound things to say to you. Jennifer, can you just speak right now to that person that's at home watching who really is battling insomnia and just the struggles with nightmares? Well, uh, I do want to speak to that. There can be a few, few open doors to that. Sometimes it's just an attack for no reason at all, just because Satan looks to still kill and destroy. We want to take authority over that. We want to bind that from happening in the name of Jesus and, and for your dreams to be unleashed at night. And, and so you're going to want to set yourself up for success. You want to, you would like, you know, you need to have some worship music on. You might have some, need to have some people pray with you and pray, pray you through that. But what is our goal? Our goal is to get those dreams. Those dreams have information. There's a reason you're being buffeted. You must be a dreamer. God must have something to say to you at night. There must be some real keys of freedom and uh, deliverance that, that God wants to deposit. Uh, for other people, and this is uh, more my story, I have a very, very difficult upbringing and the nightmares that I was having were really connected to the emotional brokenness that I had. But nevertheless, Satan takes advantage of whatever he can. And so I actually had to go through a process of 
inner healing. I had to go through a process of Christian counseling, dealing with the trauma of my life. And, you know, it, it's, it was kind of like it was emotional. It was spiritual. Um, it came to a head. And then, you know, there were points of deliverance. And I have found that, that you know, for me as a prophetic voice, as a person who hears God, uh, you know, uh, in the way that I do, uh, dreams were really, really challenged in my life because I get I get very key information in dreams. I see a lot in dreams. Um, you know, I don't say everything that I see, but nevertheless, it is a major, major source of information for me. And it's a sharp, uh, a sharp sword of information as well. And so I just want to encourage you, whatever the reason is, you may have, you know, some things like I had, well, I want you to encourage you to get well. Um, uh, you know, if it's, if it's just, you know, a random attack, I want to encourage you to take authority over it. Don't settle for this. You need to get that information at night. There's key things that God will tell you, and he's only going to tell you at night. And so I want to encourage you to go after it. Jennifer, I, I just have to, we only have a couple of minutes left, but I really wanted to ask this. What does, uh, I hear people say, well, certain colors mean certain things, certain Certain things are symbols. How do, how do we discern that? Where does that come from? Because I always, whenever I hear that, I'm like, where did they get that? How, how do you, where do you come down on, on that whole issue of symbolism in dreams? Well, it's interesting because you'll, for example, have a dream about a lion. A lion's chasing you. Okay. Well, in the Bible, a lion has both positive and negative connotations. So you want to know you, know, you want to get a, a rough knowledge of what that is. The first thing I do when there's a key symbol, we want to look at those key symbols, is I go to my Bible and I say, okay, what does the Bible say about it? And then I just, you know, in my heart and in partnership with the Holy Spirit, I just ask the question, okay, what are we dealing with here? It could be this or it could be that. And what exactly is this? And that lion, it could be, uh, you know, a negative thing. You know, hey, something's chasing you and it's not good and you need to pray and ask God for some protection. At the same time, it could be Jesus chasing you and um, uh, chasing you, you know, wanting to, to uh, you know, just have a, um, an encounter with you. It could be something like that. Well, I'm going to pray that God would open that encounter to me. I'm, I'm going to sense by the Holy Spirit which way this needs to go. And then I'm going to partner in prayer with God, invite him to do what he intends to do or stop uh, in prayer what Satan is trying to do, depending on how the Holy Spirit leads that interpretation. Well, Jennifer, in the last minute that we have with you, can you just give some final encouragement to our friends and family at home about dreaming and hearing God speak? Absolutely. See, one of the things that we were told in Acts chapter two is that if you are a believer in Jesus, not only will you prophesy, but you're going to have visions and you're going to have dreams. Uh, don't dismiss your dreams. Don't don't uh, make light of that whole area of your life. We have dreams because we're going to receive communication from God. It is important if you're being challenged in your sleep at night. I want to encourage you that freedom is, is, is waiting for you. There is going to be a freedom. And I want to encourage you to be in, to go after this side of things. When you start to crack the code of your dreams, you're going to be shocked. You're going to be like, wow, I had no idea the information that God wants to deposit in my life. And it's going to shock you what you're going to know beforehand. And, and even the warning dreams are not, are not something to be afraid of. It's something that God will do to give you a heads up so you can get ahead of the game. Uh, God always wants you to, to triumph in life, and he'll let you know ahead of time how to steer your day by what you dream at night. Mm -hmm. It's exciting, and it is intriguing. So Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Again, your book is Awaken the Dreamscape, the building blocks for understanding the supernatural power of your dreams. Jennifer, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Well, uh, again, a great conversation. I really appreciate what Jennifer has to say. But stay with us because our Meaningful Monday story is next about a former drug addict and witch who is bringing others to Christ. We'll be right back. God is calling you to do something significant in the earth for Him, regardless of your age, skill set, or perceived limitations. What's holding you back? When you give to support Cornerstone Television this month, let us bless you with Rick Renner's life-transforming book, Chosen by God. Every page will help you overcome your limited thinking and follow God's plan for your life. Rest assured, God has a plan and He will thoroughly prepare you to fulfill it if you'll say yes with all your heart. This book will thrill you with the possibilities that await because you are chosen by God. Request your copy when you give by calling 888-665-4483 or donate online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for helping us spread the gospel through life-changing programming like Rick Renner, Hope Today, Hard Questions, and more. To keep your favorite programs coming and receive Chosen by God, donate today. Well, we want to share a meaningful Monday story with you. I love this story. More than 200 people were baptized along a Florida beach this past Easter Sunday as part of a worship service hosted by a revivalist who once dabbled in the occult before she was freed in Christ. Jenny Weaver, by the way, she's, Jenny has been here. She was here in 2019 on, uh, on our program. Uh, she's a revivalist and senior leader of the core group mentorship organization, organized and uh, led the service, which featured communion, singing, and baptism under the sunny skies of Clearwater Beach. She says, we're taking that territory back that Satan stole, she wrote on Instagram. She described the scene as something out of the pages of the Bible or a movie. It was so surreal to see this massive crowd gather, and mind you, they had to walk through a magic show at the entrance of the pier to get to where we were, and the people were drawn in by the presence of God to walk away from the magic show and come to the water baptisms, and many watched and cried. And she wrote, this is a move of God. Before we were was a Christian, she was a self-described witch. She also was addicted to drugs and living on the streets. After she became a Christian, she formed Core Group as a mentorship program for women, although it has since grown to include men and children. The mass baptism service likely will not be the last one, she said. Revival is here, she wrote. I'm praying about where to do the next one. And we want to thank Michael Faust from Christian headlines.com for this story. I love this story, Anna. So There's great. nothing greater than people just rushing forward to come to know the Lord. Oh man, I mean, you know, when I was listening to that, I just thought, look at our God go. I mean, it is incredible to see the move of God and not only the testimony of Jennifer, uh, right? It's Jennifer that- uh, Jenny Weaver. Jenny Weaver, yeah. Weaver yes, yeah. that she was a, a witch, that she was addicted and she came out of that and she is, she is leading masses to Christ through baptism and that we're seeing so many receive the Lord and God is up to something good. Oh, well, he is, and this is really the thing. This is what God wants. He wants to see those that are transformed by the power of God to be used in transforming other people's lives. Now look at this. There are people rushing past a magic show, past the pier, down into the beach to get baptized. They want to meet God. They want to uh, express outwardly that, that they have, uh, something's happened inwardly. They're hungry for God. What an incredible thing. So I just wanna ask you, are you hungry for God today? I find that sometimes the people that are the most hungry are the ones that they haven't seen anything about God. Maybe they weren't raised in church like you or I. Maybe they, they haven't been in church every day of their life. But what they're saying is, I need something. So boy, it's a challenge to me. It's a challenge to you that those of us who know Christ, let it not go stale. Let it be fresh like those people that are rushing forward on the beach. Would you rush forward on the beach to just hear the word of God and to be saved? Those are the kind of passion. That's the kind of passion we need to have as Christians because when we have that passion, it spills out like, a, like a, one of those fountains that fill up on the top and it kind of flows over on the next level and on the next level. 
we need to be those people that overflow into that next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I love that this story too was all about Easter. Whenever we were celebrating our risen Lord who has conquered sin and death for us. And then interestingly, just this morning, I was reading a, again a little bit about the Christmas story of all things and how Jesus was called Emmanuel, God with us that we have this God who longs to be with us. That's how his heart beats. And to see the lengths that our God went to, to send his one and only son to this earth, to be with us, God in the flesh, to grow up and then die this death on the cross so that he would take all of our sin, all of our shame, all of our guilt, everything and that he would take it to the grave and bury it once and for all and then on that third day he rose victorious That's right. and that he is our risen king and savior and he will return one day the mighty lion of judah and he will set all things right and restore all things back to him that's right so today Take some time to just be still in the presence of Emmanuel. Be with him. You are a human being to be with God. It's in those places that he just wants to love on you, that he wants to speak those messages through, through your dreams, through his word, through others, through worship music. But we have to get still and be with God. Absolutely. You know, Jesus said something uh, several times. He said, there's something greater than the temple here. There's something greater than Solomon here. Hey, guess what? There's something greater than the eclipse here. Everybody's running around, depending on when you're seeing this, it's either happened or it's going to happen. But there's a lot of people running around to see the eclipse. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. But isn't it interesting how much our society runs to see the events in the skies? but there's a bigger event. There's something greater than the eclipse here. There's Jesus Christ, the creator of the sun, moon, and stars, the creator of everything that we see. He is the one to really get excited about, and he is the one that we need to see. So put on your spiritual glasses instead of your sunglasses, put on your spiritual glasses and say, God, show yourself to me, and you know what? He will, and you'll see new hope in your life today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, transforming lives and restoring hope to the hurting. Founder and executive director of Beyond Survival Ministries, Sue Willis, shares how her ministry is providing aid and restoration to those who have been hurt from abuse. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.